Hey you! If you're enjoying Skyline Rem and want to help make it happen, you can apply to join our backstage team in the description of this video. If you don't have the time or means, don't sweat it. Subscribe, leave a like, and enjoy the video instead. I haven't heard from London at all since the other day. I hope she's okay. Whoa! Looks like the Admiral didn't pull any punches! Look at all this security! Arden? Ah, good morning, Rex. Do you have a minute? Arden gives you a strained smile as you approach the cathedral doors. Good morning, Rex. Do you have a minute? Arden? What are you doing here? I'm the Valorant of Unity. <laughs> Naturally, I'd be informed of a situation regarding Unity's faithful priestesses. His smile becomes more thin. I'm sorry you had to experience such a thing last night. I assure you that the city of Erwin will do all they can to get to the bottom of this- Okay, well forget about me. Is London okay? You gulp. I haven't had the chance to see her since I overheard that threat against her. She's not hurt, right? Relax. Arden places a hand on your shoulder. London is fine. And we intend to keep it that way. He motions toward the various guards around the area. Now, the Admiral has already informed me of what you told her, but I'd like to hear the full story from you, personally, if you don't mind. No, oh, that's fine. Where do I even start? You begin to explain to Arden in detail the events of the other night. You tell him about how you wanted advice from Reyna, which led you to the confessionals. You explain how empty the church was just before you stepped inside, and how equally empty it was when you stepped out. A shiver goes down your spine as you restate the words you heard from the opposite confessional. Arden nods quietly as he listens to your tale. After I heard what they said, I, I tried to rush after them, but... They were long gone, I assume, Arden says. You notice his body becomes stiff as he starts to consider the details of your story more and more. He shakes his head. To think that someone confessed such a plot in a place of worship yeah, just really freaked me out. I can imagine, he says to you. From what Rain has told me, you and Miss Remington have formed a sort of companionship with one another. You notice him gulp subtly before he glances back toward the cathedral. Rex, would you mind if you showed me where, the, where you and the unknown suspect are standing at the confessionals? Yeah, sure, I can do that. Follow me. Alright. <sighs> Whoa. Okay. A lot of people around now. 
So many Vanguard members. It's a good thing they're taking this seriously. Hey guys! How you guys doing? It was right back here. Bad memories. But, uh, it was over here. This is the spot. You and Arden approached the confessional cautiously. You motioned to the chamber you sat inside the night before. I was right in there, and the other person was over there. You explained to Arden. I see. And the man opens the door on the left side of the confessional to look within. He narrows his eyes. Everything looks normal, he murmurs. Yeah, they left in a hurry, obviously. You sigh under your breath. I was hoping that maybe they left something behind, but that was probably just wishful thinking. Hmm. Arden acknowledges your statement, although he doesn't offer much more of a response. The man then moves to the opposite end of the confessional, your side. He pauses. Hang on, D did you say you were sitting in here? Uh, yeah? Why? He pinches the bridge of his nose and sighs. <sighs> That's where the priestesses sit, Rex. Oh. He suddenly pauses before looking up at the confessionals and realization. Then, that means the person you were talking to sat on the other side. Were they? You blink as you realize what he's saying. Trying to talk to a priestess. You take a step back as the thought clicks into place. Wait, does that mean that this person's in cahoots with a priestess? It seems likely, Arden mutters before biting his lip. This is worse than I thought. You look at Arden as his brow furrows. He seems deep in thought as he stares at the confessionals in silence. Can't recall a time you've seen him like this before. You good, Arden? He glanced in your direction before offering a pearly smile. Of course. <laughs> While these circumstances are less than ideal, I'm certain that the goddess will not allow one of her faithful priestesses to fall. <laughs> You're really that confident in unity, huh? Naturally, he smiles. Still, you notice the corner of his mouth twitch. Although, I am troubled by the fact that it is one of her fellow priestesses that seems to be at the heart of this plot. Yeah, tell me about it. You put your hands on your hips. Why would a sister want to hurt London? I'm not sure. But it's imperative that we discover the truth sooner rather than later. So... What do we do next? Arden opens his mouth to answer the question, but he cuts himself off. Actually, he considers all of the information before you both. Given the new evidence we have, I think it would be best if we continue this conversation with someone else. He motions for you to stay put. Give me a minute, alright? I'll be back. Uh, yeah, sure thing. You clap it your hands in front of you awkwardly as Arden gives you a respectful nod and then walks off. You hear his footsteps echo as he gets further and further away. You glance back at the confessionals passively, your mind still lingering on the, nights befo on the night before. Why would someone want to do that to London? I wish I could just wrap my head around it, but it... It's kind of scary, huh? It's been a while since I actually felt real danger 
I guess. Well, last time it was in the mausoleum, but no, it's just... Can't exactly tumble into a statue and get away from it. I hope she's okay. Arden rounds the corner and walks back over to you, mid-conversation. He refers to a figure on his left. And so, we found out that there must be another priestess involved in this plot, as unfortunate as it is. Therefore, I recommend that... We round up all the priestesses and question their location last night? The other voice asks to confirm. You immediately tense up as you lock eyes with them. Wait! D you! The prince crosses his arms at you and scoffs. <laughs> Fixer. What are you doing here? You question. Investigating, obviously. He answers simply. What else? Arden motions to Vincent. Prince Vincent will be taking charge of this case, Rex. I've already informed him of everything you told me. Why does it have to be him, huh? You look at Arden furiously. I thought... You were the one in charge! You know, cause you're the Valorant of stuff! Arden blinks at you awkwardly. Prince Vincent was placed in charge due to your recommendation, Rex, he explains. During our last encounter, you told me that the Star Seeker should start taking him more seriously. Remember? You grow pale as the memories rush back to you. I did say that, didn't I? We took your words into consideration and decided to give him a chance, just like you said. You stumble over your words. But, I didn't mean it like that! <laughs> Vincent tosses his head to the side. Just deal with it, Fixer. He addresses you coldly. The Star Seekers have already approved of me heading this operation. And I don't intend on failing. <laughs> Fine then. What's the plan? Ah, he cuts you off. There is no plan. Not for you, at least. What's that supposed to mean? You ask with a frown. I'm the one leading this investigation. Not you. I will be working closely with the members of the Aegean Vanguard and the Cathedral of Unity. But not you. What? Man! Don't be a jerk! I'm going to help! Arden hesitates. Vincent, Rex was the one who discovered the plot in the first place. Are you sure this is how you want to go about this? I don't need the Fixer's help, Vincent says. Great work being in the right place at the right time. But I don't need you anymore. You can't just kick me off! London is my friend! I can assure you that Miss Remington will be safe. She'll be under constant surveillance by myself or high-ranking members of the Aegean Vanguard. Whoever is behind this will be brought to justice, and you'll read about their successful arrest in tomorrow's paper. He smiles as he places his hands on his hips. Till then, I have no use for you here. But, uh, but uh, that's not fair! Who said anything about fair? Vincent raises an eyebrow. You grit your teeth as you feel blood rush to your face. Vincent sighs. <sighs> if it's any consolation, Rex, it's only mildly personal. Oh, only mildly? I just can't have you interfering. That's all. Unity knows that you might end up messing everything up. And I can't risk that. Not with something this serious. Vincent snaps his fingers and suddenly a number of Aegean Vanguard members appear from around the corner to stand behind him. Now, either you can see yourself out, or I will remove you from the cathedral by force. This location's now off-limits while we're questioning the priestesses. Vincent waves you off. Well, Arden! Tell him to let me help! Arden shakes his head. I'm sorry, Rex, but Prince Vincent is rightfully in charge of this case. I have no further say in it as you do. What the? This is bogus! You shout. You can't kick me out! Watch me. Vincent looks at his nails. Guards, please remove the fixer from the cathedral. 
I don't want any distractions. After that, round up the priestesses for questioning. Yes, Prince Vincent, they all reply. Before you can react, several guards approach you and take you by the arms. What? Hey! Did you think you could just boss me around like this? I'm a force that can't be contained! I- You're outside. Ah! That stupid dumb- Ah! Ah! Crap. Well, what the heck? London's in there. Oh, man. What am I supposed to do about this? Maybe... I guess I could just try looking around. Hmm. The S Cathedral really is huge. You wipe your brow as you walk around Lunar Isle. The sun's rays beam down on you, causing you to sweat. I would have to be a scorcher today of all days. You try to ignore the heat by stepping underneath the shade of the large trees. You glance around the area for any signs of life outside of the chapel. There are a handful of people walking around in the sun, but for the most part, the aisle is empty. You spot a couple of Aegean Vanguard members hanging around the front entrance of the cathedral. You stare at them angrily for some time. Man, is it hot today, one of them complains. Just focus on the job for now, another confronts him, comforts him. Nothing we can do about a little weather. You tear your gaze away from the two guards and continue on your way as you air out your tunic for a moment. You just have to find a way back into the cathedral. You vaguely remember that there are other doors that lead into the cathedral. Maybe you can slip into the side and convince the guards that you're allowed in. So long as you avoid Vincent, you should be okay. <sighs> Look how big it is. Like, it's actually towering. <sighs> Here we go. <clears throat> Hello. Hello. You approach the large doors at the side of the cathedral, noting the Aegean vanguard members as you do. You puff up your chest and walk towards the guards, offering them a smile as you stand before them. Hello there! Nice weather we're having, huh? The guards glance at one another, and then back at you. Warm day? One of them comments. You're the fixer of Erwin, right? The other asks. I remember seeing you talking with the Admiral earlier. Yep, that's right! And as the fixer, I'm here to help with the case. You put your hands up as if to hold some inaudible applause. No need to thank me. <laughs> so if I could just get into that cathedral and try to worm past the guards, but they block your path as you attempt to walk through. I'm sorry, but we're under strict orders from the lead investigator to keep any and all members of the public out of the Cathedral of Unity. Well, well come on, man. I can help. The guards don't budge. It's not up to us, Fixer, one says. If you have a complaint, you can bring it up to the lead investigator. You frown and give him a sour look. Well, doesn't talk to Vincent? I think I'll pass. And there's nothing we can do for you, I'm afraid. Only authorized personnel are currently allowed to enter the chapel. Ugh, fine! God, so dumb and stupid! <sighs> Vincent, I see the game you're playing. You think you covered all bases? I can't be contained! Well, I guess I'm not being contained. I can't be restrained! There we go. That one. Okay, so if I can't go in through the doors... A window? 
I can't reach that window. I can't reach any of those windows. Okay. Plan D, then. Um... Won't be able to talk to those guys either. Towers really are big. Hmm? What's that? It's not the cathedral, but it's worth looking at, I guess. Might as well explore all my avenues. Going to one of the captains? Yeah, no. The Admiral is walking around, and even if she's having to defer to Vincent, then that's not going to work. <sighs> Dig under? With what tools? And how long? <laughs> this isn't a prison break, I gotta get in! Offer the guard healing mist? I don't think they'll take me up on that offer. Bribe? I don't have money on me! Ugh! You're soliciting random people for help? Alright, we'll, we'll explore that avenue in a bit. <coughs> what is this? Oh. 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 It's a graveyard. Whoa. I, I guess this I, it makes sense the city would have one. It just totally slipped my mind that there would be one up until this point. Huh. A lot of people. Hello there. You scream as the figure suddenly appears in front of you. You swear you didn't even hear any footsteps. Where did this person even come from? Before you stands a tall and almost skeletal man, dressed entirely in white, black, and gray. He has his hands behind his, mac his back and a pleasant look on his face. His eyes are a hazy gray color and his hair, similar to yours. Is black and white. Uh, uh, uh. Hi. Welcome to my humble garden, he says. His voice is hardly above a whisper. It's not often that we get visitors here. What the, what, 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 we? You ask in confusion. However, the man just moves on without answering your question. Furthermore, I don't recognize you as a regular. He comments. Are you here for someone in particular? Or perhaps you're just browsing? B b browsing? No way, man. I, I was just... leaning around. I see. He frowns. So, you're not here for anyone. He glances to his right and nods slowly. Yes, it is rather strange, isn't it? Most people don't enter a graveyard simply to look around. You blink in confusion as you glance to the man's right in search of whatever he was muttering toward. Is, is this guy crazy or something? I, I don't want any trouble. I didn't mean to intrude on your cemetery. It's hardly an intrusion. The man holds up a hand. It's our pleasure to welcome anyone who wishes to honor the deceased. Or clear their thoughts. He stares at you intensely. That being said, I can sense you have plenty of thoughts to clear, he murmurs. Why don't you enlighten me with what's on your mind? I, I, I don't want to bother you with that, you start to argue. I insist. The man lowers his head. You hesitate but eventually sigh. <sighs> Have you ever heard about everything that's been going on at the cathedral? I am aware of the investigation, he says, but that's all I know. 
<coughs> well, I'm trying to help with that investigation, you explain. But in order to do that, I need a way to find I need to find a way to talk to a friend of mine who's inside the chapel. The problem is they're not letting anyone in right now because of the whole thing. Who is this friend? Might I ask? D no offense, but I don't really want to tell you that. You motion to the man. I wasn't even expecting to run into anyone in here. I was just minding my own business and you came out of nowhere like, like a ghost or something. He chuckles at the statement. <laughs> a ghost? What a funny thing to say. Surely you jest. Just, who are you, exactly? The man smiles. Ah, introductions. Of course. Where are my manners? He bows his head. My name is Lyle Mary Penn. I am the groundskeeper of the Lunar Isle Cemetery. A pleasure to make your acquaintance. Groundskeeper? You cringe at the idea. Does that mean you do stuff to dead bodies? Lyle considers your words. Among other things, there is much more to my duties than simply preparing the bodies. He walks to a nearby grave and withdraws a couple of pink tulips from a pouch on his thigh. He places the flowers in front of the grave carefully. I arrange funerals. I honor the loved ones who have passed. I give my blessings to the remaining families. Most importantly, I celebrate their life and their death. I commemorate how they leave one state of being and enter another. I... don't understand. You don't have to, he says. Although you swear that he glances to his left this time and chuckles at nothing. You narrow your eyes at him suspiciously. Never mind the semantics. He dusts off his hands before turning to you. I believe it's only fair that you give me your name now. After all, if we're going to become acquainted, I'd like to know who I'm speaking with. Oh, right. You place a hand on your chest. My name's Rex. I'm... The Fixer of Erwin. Quite the title. I can't say I've heard it before. You haven't? You question. I've been doing all kinds of work around Erwin. The paper is not often delivered to my abode. He motions to the graveyard around you. There is no need for news in a place like this. I... Yes, that makes sense. If I may trouble you with another question now, Lyle continues. Why do you care to talk to this friend you mentioned? You blink in confusion at the question. Be be because they're my friend? Yes, I understand that. But I fail to see the urgency. Be because I'm worried about that. Why are you worried? Do, do I need a reason to be worried? You cross your arms. So you don't have one? Lyle raises an eyebrow. No. You shake your head after a moment. I just am. I want to help my friend, but... It feels impossible right now. Hmm. How... Interesting. Lyle mutters. Uh, huh? What's interesting? The man turns to his right and considers something. He nods intently. I'd have to agree, he says to the air. There is some potential there. But we can't be certain of anything until the task is complete. T -t task You question. What, what, what task? I'm glad you asked, he says as he turns back to you. Step closer. You cautiously walk closer to Lyle as he reaches into his pockets and removes three different items. 
and the first item is a small bundle of lavender stalks. The second is a bird carved from wood. The third is a golden chain with red gemstones hanging from the thick links. He holds the items in front of you. Several of the grades are missing their proper offerings, he says. I'd like you to place them in the respective locations. If you do this for me, I may help you meet this friend. Does that seem like a fair trade? Why can't you do it yourself? I have other business to attend to, he answers simply. All right. You take the items from him carefully. In that case, which graves are you talking about? I will leave you to figure that out. What? what? How are we supposed to know which offering goes where? You ask. You just need to trust your instincts, Rex. And the man answers vaguely. Oh, sure. Yeah. That's not cryptic at all. I have faith in your capabilities, he replies. You must have faith in yourself. You step away from the man slowly. You look back and forth between Lyle and the items, still unsure of what he's asking you to do. Lyle turns his back to you after a moment and starts to stroll down the rows of graves. As he leaves, he continues to speak with the air. Yes, I'm quite sure. I doubt they will mind. It's not any trouble at all. Okay. All right. Why not? <sighs> okay. Interesting. Well, um, that's fine. How, what? There's so many graves! How am I supposed to know? <sighs> Whatever. I can do this. And yeah, I have to. So he'll help me. Or something. It's just a bench? Huh. <clears throat> anyway. <coughs> hmm. I guess we just stroll around the graveyard until we figure out what we need to do. It's a lot of graves. A lot of graves. As you walk down the rows of gravestones, one in particular catches your eye. There's nothing visually notable about the gravestone, but you feel yourself getting drawn to it nonetheless. It's as though a strange feeling is emanating from the stone, which fills your heart with an unusual ache. You kneel next to the stone, and stare at the name. Anthony Perez, it reads. You repeat the name to yourself curiously before looking over the items in your hand. Your eyes scan over each of them carefully. A bundle of lavender, a wooden bird, and a glittering necklace. How are you supposed to know which offering goes to which grave? You look back up at Anthony Perez and frown can't shake off the feeling deep in your chest. Feels like the answer is right in front of you. You inhale and exhale calmly before looking up at the clear blue sky overhead. You let your mind wander and your eyes slowly close. Behind your eyelids, you see yourself standing in a lush forest. It reminds you of the windswept woods. Tall trees tower over you and block out the natural sunlight, and you can hear a multitude of creatures croaking and howling past the bramble. 
there are a number of red robins and blue jays chirping amid the branches as well. You also saw something interesting. Smoke? Your eyes drift down from past your eyelids, and you vaguely make out a campfire. The golden glow illuminates the various logs and sticks scattered across over the ground. There's an iron dagger resting on a rock to your right, and a number of wood chips and shavings around your feet. You open your eyes quickly and take a moment to catch your breath. You look back at the grave in confusion. <sighs> the wind washes over the graveyard, calming your nerves almost immediately. You turn your attention back to the items that Lyle gave you. Which one should you offer to the gravestone? So, bird? You place the wooden bird sculpture next to the headstone. You brush aside a couple of considerably large blades of grass in order to let the bird rest on the stable ground. Once you're satisfied with your work, you wipe your brow and stand up. <clears throat> Another feeling starts to wash over you as you step away from the gravestone and observe your work. Your body feels weightless for a split second, and your heart swells with joy. You blink even more confused than before. What's going on? Huh. I think that felt right. If that's even possible. I still got two more. Um, okay. Huh. You pause as you feel your head slowly drift to a nearby gravestone as if some invisible force pulled your gaze like a magnet with iron. The gravestone is a bit more ornate than the others, with several elegant vines and roses engraved in the smooth stone. You stare at the name for a moment in silence. Maria Thompson. You gulp as you consider the last gravestone and the images that flash through your mind behind your eyes. You stare at the name for a couple of tense moments before closing your eyes again in an attempt to replicate the same results. As soon as your eyes are closed, you faintly make out a strong, fragrant scent and permeating the air. It reminds you of the smell of the cafe in Astrocentrum Square. Is that tea? A scene starts to form from the darkness behind your eyelids. You see pristine walls with mahogany-framed paintings, and your body feels comfortable, as though you were sitting in the most cushioned chair. The noises of the distant ocean start to fade away, replaced with a grand piano that plays a dignified classical piece. There's a chess table in front of you, and several expensive-looking vases lined up along the farthest wall. You open your eyes and pant, Look back down at the items in your grip. At this point, you've narrowed down your pool to two. Which belongs to this grave, though. Hmm. Lavender? No. There was wealth. You hold up the golden necklace and observe how the gemstones glitter in the sunlight. You drape the jewels over the top of the ornate gravestone before stepping back to observe your work, nodding as you find yourself content with your choice. Again, as you're about to walk away from the grave, a breeze rushes by you and your heart swells. You clutch your tunic in confusion as you glance back toward Maria Thompson. Your mind fills with certainty in your decision. I 
feel like I'm guessing. At the same time, it just feels right. What is going on? Yeesh. You look down at the final item in your possession. The bundle of lavender smells pleasant as you consider the offering before turning to the headstones around you. Your gaze focuses on one particular grave near the gazebo. You narrow your eyes as the at the name as butterflies fill your stomach. The name on the headstone reads, Anna Williams. You kneel by the gravestone and look down at the bundle of lavenders in your hand. The scent becomes overwhelming for a moment as you close your eyes and let the sensation take you. An image drifts to the front of your mind. You're standing in a vibrant meadow. Several colorful flowers dot the landscape and mingle with tall grasses. You almost sneeze as pollen is carried through the air by gentle gales that sweep the field. You hold on to the feeling as you look down at the lavender stalks around your feet. You open your eyes and stare at the bundle in your grip. Carefully, you place the bundle in front of the grave and respectfully bow your head. You can't help but feel a pang of sorrow warm its way into your gut but you quickly shake it off as soon as you find the strength to stand once more. You look around for any sign of Lyle, your hands now effectively emptied. You feel almost at peace as you stand next to the burial site. You take a deep breath and exhale your worries before making your way back to the groundskeeper. Okay. What's up? You find Lyle standing by himself in the gazebo. He looks out across the graves in tranquility. You clear your throat as you approach to ensure you don't startle him. I did what you asked of me, Lyle. He looks back at you, and a sparkle appears in his eyes at the news. You did, he confirms. Before you can even say yes or no, the man steps toward you. He speaks with a sudden passion. Describe your experience to me, Rex. It was... Uh, kind of sad. Why? He tilts his head. I, I don't know how to explain it. You struggle. While I was walking around, I... Felt like I had a weird connection with a couple of those people who passed. In what way? He continues to inquire. Felt like I was helping them. You rub the back of your neck. It doesn't make any sense to me, but I got the impression that I got that impression when I placed those offerings down. And at first, it felt a little nice. I like helping people, but and I started to feel bad that they were gone. You look back up at Lyle as he takes in your answer. He seems fascinated. I see. You continue as you look back at the graves. I hope their loved ones still visit them. Lyle stares at you as you look back at the graves. He walks over to stand at your side. Oftentimes they do, he reassures you. I remember each of their faces quite clearly. The man places his hand over his mouth and looks to the left. You're right. He does seem so. It only proves my suspicions further, doesn't it? Y your what? Lyle places his hands behind his back and strides to stand in front of you. There is a very rare type of person, Rex. A person with such exceeding empathy, who is capable of not only caring about themselves and others. Their empathy stretches so deep that they start to care for even the departed. They seek to help those who are entirely incapable of helping themselves. You listen to him intently. 
These empaths are far and few between, the man continues. However, I sense that you may just be one of these people the moment I spoke with you. And what does that mean, though? You have a great deal of potential, but you appear to be unaware of how to utilize that potential to your advantage, he explains. How would I do that, you ask? I don't know how having empathy is going to help me solve my problems. Your capacity to care for the departed is a precious ability, he says. There are countless spirits who rely on people like you to connect with the world again. What? You blink at him as a chill goes up your spine. You just hear him, right? Right. <laughs> yeah. Spirits. You hug yourself. You don't mean, like, actual spirits, do you? Th that's gotta be some extended metaphor or something. The man stares at you. Entirely serious. Have you never encountered a spirit? Nope, can't say I have. Lyle nods at your answer. That is nothing to be ashamed of. But you're, you're, you're telling me that spirits are real, you reiterate. Quite real. He glances to his left before continuing. Sometimes... People don't move on after they pass. Sometimes they linger because their business in this world is unfinished. Or perhaps they simply have the greater purpose they wish to fulfill. Even just a longing to persist. Whatever the case may be, those spirits do not have a connection with the real world and exist just between it, invisible to the naked eye. However... A trained eye can see beyond the space they occupy and call upon their assistance from the beyond. Whoa. Based on what you've experienced today, I'm going to make an educated guest and say that you feel a profound connection with someone. You see things you otherwise wouldn't be able to see. Is that correct? Uh, I don't know about that. You frown. Perhaps you thought it was just your imagination, he says. Or perhaps you thought that your mind was just wandering. But it's so much more than that. As Lyle explains the phenomenon, you recall the events that unfolded, which allowed you to absolve Allison Kors. Wait. Maybe. I get the impression you understand. It's like you said, I thought I was just imagining it, you explain. But sometimes people tell me stories, and I swear I see the scenes unfold in my head. Those scenes are, you see, are more likely the memories of the person you're speaking with, Lyle says. In your effort to understand, you gazed into their spirit and relived the memory in your mind's eye. What? But... How is that possible? Can I read minds? Nothing so profound, I'm afraid. <laughs> we call this ability spiritual communion. When your spirit melds with another, you are able to share a moment with them and see things you otherwise would not see. It's an uncommon skill that only those who study the occult are able to execute. You shake your head. I'm so confused. See memories? Spiritual mumbo-jumbo? What, what are you talking about? Lyle sighs and looks to his left again. <sighs> it appears I may have overwhelmed him. He mumbles before dressing you again. It becomes far less confusing once you become accustomed to it. All it takes is you believing, Rex. Then you can see that which you cannot see. All it takes is you believing, Rex, and you can see that which you cannot see.
He's literally staring right at me. It's kind of freaky. You stumble backward in shock as you stare at the floating blue person before you. She's not very tall, although her ability to hover above the ground compensates for her lack of height. Her clothes, hair, and skin are all shades of blue, and you swear that she's mildly transparent. Why'd you have to scream at me like that? WHO THE HECK ARE YOU?! Lyle just grins happily. Congratulations, my friend. It seems my instincts are right about you. You have a natural gift for the occult. What is that supposed to mean? You ask as you try to catch your breath. Only rare individuals are capable of accomplishing this magic naturally. It took me years of practice and study to channel the abilities I have now. And yet you possess them without any formal training. Incredible. Awesome. Now can you explain why there is a blue person right there? What? Hey! What's wrong with being blue? The person you are referring to is a spirit, Lyle says. She is an assistant of mine. Her name is Cat. I... What? This is going too fast, man! The spirit, Cat, places her hands on her hips and nods along with what Lyle says. She knows what I know. We have studied all there is to study on the occult together. Great. Cool. Awesome. That's fantastic. You stand up and brush yourself off before you begin to pace back and forth. Spirits are real. They're real. And one of them is right there. Oh, jeez. Just how many spirits are there? In the world? Or in this graveyard? Lyle asks for confirmation. Never mind. I don't even want to know. You're in for a rude awakening one of these days. <laughs> the specter snickers at you. Any who, who choose to study the occult must learn eventually. Lyle replies to Cat calmly as he withdraws a dusty book. He brushes off the cover and flips through the pages with meticulous and bony fingers. If you ever have any questions, my friend, do not hesitate to ask them. It is refreshing to meet another empathetic individual in Arrowin, after all. What can I do with this whole spirit talking thing spiritual communion you can use your gift how you wish lyle says based on your actions today i can tell that you intend to use it for good i sense you will do great things in due time D thanks i guess that being said lyle closes the book again i believe you had an issue of your own to resolve now that i have learned of your talents I will help you wholeheartedly. You said this was for a friend, yes? You hold your gaze for a moment. Despite your previous suspicions, you admit that Lyle's openness to share his craft with you and his good-natured mannerisms have led you to trust him. That's... right. It's about my friend, London. She's in trouble. His expression shifts. London. Remington. You know her? I do. Isn't that the wolf anime who comes around here? Correct. She frequents a graveyard? There are not many who choose to visit these grounds. She is the only other who comes here to pay her respects to the dead. And much like you, she had very little reason to. I sense that she does not possess the abilities that you or I do, but she spends time here all the same. Emotions to where you're standing. I will often observe her standing right there, and she always has a sorrowful expression on her face. Why is that? I'm not sure. I don't believe she has a connection to anyone here, either. It's all quite curious. Lyle glances toward the cathedral. If London Remington is the person you wish to help, then I'd like to do all that I can to assist. I'll need information to help her, but I still can't get into the cathedral. 
The man considers your circumstances. He reaches into his pocket. I believe that my own access to the cathedral will be limited to the investigation. However, I can offer you two key items that could aid you in your search for information. He hands you a small black key. This key can open the entrances to the cathedral, he explains. Use it wisely. Oh, sweet! You accept the key and quickly stash it in your pocket. Secondly, Lyle continues, if Kat is willing, I believe she may be able to help. Allow her to act as your guide. I believe she may be able to assist you in gathering information on how to help your friend. After all, no information can hide from the watchful gaze of an occult user. Is it really that powerful? I will let the magic speak for itself. Thanks, Lyle. I I'm glad I came here. I doubt you are the only one. I believe you have pleased many in this graveyard today with your presence. The man answers. Now then, I will leave the two of you to speak with one another. In the meantime, I have many more spirits to appease. If you have a need for me, you know where to find me. I... I do? He motions around the graveyard. This is my abode. I will be here for any who visit, no matter what form they take when they enter, living or dead. All right, then. Take care, Lyle. You or Blue? Uh-huh. You, oh, wow, okay. And you can fly? Uh-huh. Man, I'm jealous. <laughs> About the flying oh, part, uh, not, not the blue part. Yeah. Just just, just a tiny little consequence, you know, called, called being dead. Right. Um, what's that like? How do I even begin to explain that? You know what? Um, you don't have you don't have to if you don't want to. Just trying to that's probably break the ice. A better idea. <laughs> anyway, um... well, uh, pleasure to meet you. Um, uh, again, pleasure I am to meet you too. I am Rex. Though you saw me longer than I saw you, I can't wrap my head around this. How long have you been there? The whole time. Uh huh. Okay. And you you heard everything I could say. Mm -hmm. And see, uh, does that happen a lot? Did, did, like. Mm -hmm. You're you real. Are you are like the third person who can see me. You are real. You are like I'm real. Talking to me, real as you are, and saying things. And holy crap, ghosts are real. Okay. Congratulations, Rex. You're a brand new occult user. Occult. Great. Awesome. Uh, d d disregarding the fact that that is the dopest name for a magic I've ever heard. Uh, <laughs> what does that entail exactly? Well, all sorts of spirity stuff. Spirity is... stuff. Yeah. Okay. Great. Cool. Spirits. I heard about spirits before. They're mm -hmm. a part of the of a of a of a person, right? Everyone has yep. a spirit. Okay. Gotcha. Who are they again? Hold on. It's uh the Take body. Your time. Body. Soul, uh -huh. spirit, afterlight. Mm hmm. So a cult does stuff with spirits, I guess? Exactly. You got it. Okay. All right. I, I, I think I understand it, finally. Holy crap, there's a lot to learn in like 10 minutes. <laughs> Don't worry. You'll get the hang of it soon. Okay. Great. Awesome. Uh, well, I need to get in there. I guess the key helps, but it doesn't give me press the guards. You said you weren't allowed in there, right? No, stupid Vincent. You know, dumb idiot. Mm. Though I already tried talking to them. Smooth talked my way in, you know? I was like, hey, fix your Varowin here. Let me in. I want to I wanna fix things. And they, they didn't bite. What if you just were a guard? <sighs> 
I, I wouldn't know how I'd do that. I mean, I guess it could like ask Elaine, but I'd have to go all the way across the city. No, and then... no, 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 silly. Disguise yourself. But I, I... get one of their uniforms, put it on. Bam! You're a guard. But that that's stealing. Ah, 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 ah. Not stealing. Borrowing. Come on. But borrowing? It's still a crime! <laughs> Listen, it's for the greater good, okay? Also, rules don't really apply when you're dead, you know? What are they gonna do? Arrest you? <laughs> I guess that's true, but I'm not dead! Alright, whatever. <sighs> if it's the only way I can get to London. <sighs> I don't know how I'm gonna get a guard's uniform, though. I'm just gonna say, hey, you mind uh, just taking off the armor for a second? Hmm. Well, so you can always try concocting something once you get there. This is your first puzzle, I guess. Oh boy. Well, I, I, I doubt cult magic's gonna be able to help me through this one. I'm sure you have some natural other talents in there. You're right. <sighs> Serious Rex time. Let's what? case the scene. Two guards. You spot the same guards who previously turned you away at the side entrance. You duck behind a tree to watch them as they talk with one another. Cat hovers next to you, but makes no moves to hide from the guards. That's it. I can't take this anymore, one of them says. He starts to take off his armor pieces. What the heck are you doing? I'm going to take a quick dip into the ocean. The heat's becoming too much to handle. You can't just leave your post like that. The other narrows their eyes. If the lead investigator found out, he's not gonna find out. I'll be back before you know it. I just need five minutes to jump into the water and cool off. That's all. The guard leaves his armor pieces on the steps before walking toward the coast. He's wearing nothing but a simple tunic, belt, and a dark pair of pants. His outfit's similar to yours. All right. Don't say I didn't warn you. A moment of silence passes by you, Cat and the other guards. The other guard reigns at his post diligently. You scowl. Oh, dang it! Could have been the perfect chance to sneak by. Cat glances at you, and then back at the guard. She gets a mischievous grin and giggles a bit to herself. <laughs> you pause and look back at her. Okay, stop that? That is creepy. What, what, what are you laughing for? How badly do you want to get into that cathedral, Rex? Pretty badly. It's my only shot to find London. Got it. In that case, leave that second guard to me. What are you going to do? You ask skeptically. I doubt they can see you. They don't need to see me. Just watch and learn. Cat floats off toward the guard. You watch as the spirit flies right by him and phases through the door into the chapel. What? Hey! There's another long moment of silence as you stare toward the cathedral in confusion. You wait with bated breath for the ghost to return. Suddenly, a loud bang echoes from within the cathedral. The guard at the entrance instantly perks up and looks back toward the door. They fumble with the key and rush inside to investigate. They lock the door behind them. Kat returns to you not too long after with a smile on her face. All right. I doubt that'll occupy them for long. You should get your plan over with and head in quickly. What, what, what the heck did you do? I just knocked down one of the fancy candle holders. It's fairly harmless, but given the tension I saw over there, I figured they'd be jumpy. It was enough to lure the other guard away, right? I mean, I, I guess you're right. Now hurry up and get over to the door before the guard comes out. You have minutes at most. Uh, yeah, yeah, on it. <laughs> okay. Oh, we could just take the key, go in. Okay. Uh, Don't look! I, okay.
You adjust the pieces of armor carefully. You shake your hair out, looking around the interior of the cathedral. Your spectral companion glides into your view. What happened to the helmet? Cat comments as she looks you up and down. Horns get in the way? Yeah, I'll just have to make do. You know you're going to have to avoid Vincent. While you may be able to fool everyone else with the uniform, Vincent will bust you immediately. As such, you try to act as casually as possible to mask your nervousness as you proceed. You note that there are a couple of priestesses scattered around the room. Not nearly as many as you're accustomed to. This feels so much weirder than before. Considering what's going on, that's to be expected. Cat crosses her arms. Look up at the ghost optimistically. You wouldn't happen to know where London is, right? Just because I recognize who London in is doesn't mean I know where she lives. That's not how being dead works. Well, it was worth a try. You sigh as you stare up at the massive hall of the chapel. Looks like we're just going to have to start searching, you grimace. Cat nods as she glides behind you. You take a deep breath to gather your wits before trudging forward. <sighs> All right. I just gotta investigate. Gotta go around the whole... whole cathedral. And we're... <gasps> That's Vincent. I see. Okay. Man, stupid idiot jerk, make me have to sneak around him and stuff. Alright, cool. Good job, good job, you're doing good. I don't know where I'm going, exactly. Well, you're investigating around, -na 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 -na. I guess. -na -na -na. You walk across the ground floor of the cathedral with a frown. You can't seem to find London standing around. It only just now dawns on you how large this building is. How many side rooms are there, you wonder? And how are you supposed to know which one London is in? Cat floats behind you and crosses her arms. Let me guess. You're lost. Is it that obvious? When you make that face, it is. You're gonna get caught if you keep sticking out like a sore thumb. Well, then how do I find her? I, I don't know. Maybe try asking someone? Yeah, but who? You roll your eyes. How am I supposed to ask for directions and not draw attention to myself at the same time? Any member of Vanguard will be suspicious. Will find that suspicious, I bet. You glance at the various priestesses that wander the cathedral, and an idea starts to form in your mind. But maybe one of them will know. Don't you think that a priestess would be the least likely to talk? After all, they know about this entire investigation. They'd probably want to protect a fellow sister and keep her location a secret. True. But as far as they know, I'm just another member of the Vanguard who's helping with the investigation. Therefore, it would be in their best interest to talk to me so I can solve this problem for them. They don't call me the fixer for nothing! The what? Forget it. Let's see. You scan the halls to the nearest priestess to talk to. You notice one young woman cleaning a window, just a handful of feet away from you. She has a white rag and a tight grip as she scrubs at the glass. Her gaze is cold and haughty, and despite the manual labor she's doing, she holds her head high. She has long gray hair that flows down her back past the black veil, and dusty pink eyes. What about her? Knock yourself out. Not like it matters to me who you choose to talk with. You confidently stride forward with squared shoulders and your head held high to appear as guard-like as possible. You halt in front of her and she frowns at you. Hmm? What is it? Hello there, random priestess. I am a member of the Aegean Vanguard. I'm here to see- The priestess scoffs. <laughs> random priestess? Seriously? Don't you know who I am? I'm not just some random priestess, okay? I'm Esther Henman. Get your facts straight. Uh, uh 
you blink at her in confusion. Also, I can see that you're a member of the Vanguard. I'm not stupid. You're wearing the same armor as the rest of them. The spirit snickers. <laughs> nice going, Rex. You really, uh, mixered that one. Eh? Get it? T -t Sorry, I, I didn't mean to, to offend you or anything. Well, you did. <laughs> You're lucky I'm in such a nice mood, and I don't feel like reporting you to your superiors. Anyway, what did you say you needed again? You try to compose yourself quickly. Uh, uh, <clears throat> uh, I'm here to see London Remington. I, I have to talk to her about uh, the case. Very smooth. Cat nods encouragingly. The priestess makes a visibly disgusted face. Oh, of course. I should have guessed... Everyone wants to talk to London nowadays. Okay, she's literally being threatened. Exactly! Why is it that she's the one getting threatened here? There are plenty of better priestesses than her. She's not that great. You furrow your brow. This quickly got off topic, but your interest is piqued. You don't seem to like London very much. You remember the other priestess you spoke to? Now, they didn't seem like a fan of London, either. You assumed it was just her opinion, but just how many of these priestesses feel the same way? Esther crosses her arms. What's there to like? She's so attention-starved that she wormed her way into being High Priestess Reyna's favorite. She just loves the power, I guess. She likes to put on this act that she's a good girl, but she's really just trouble. That's what I mean when I say that she's not all that great. Wait, what makes you think she's power hungry? She rolls her eyes and opens her mouth as she begins to spiral into a lengthy and gossipy tale. So, you know the sanctuary over there? Yeah, I was going in to clean up some incense with some of the other priestesses who are part of the choir. Note that this was right before a really important sermon a couple weeks ago. Your eyes narrow as you listen to the priestesses recanting. Cat hovers next to your head and points at the girl. Rex... Focus on her words. Think about them very carefully and let your mind wander. You allow your mind to wander a bit, drifting in an almost subconscious space, where you're both present and yet not at the same time. The sounds of the world outside of your conversation fade into the background as you find yourself seeing something new. Definitely the cathedral. Huh. It looks the same. If I guess this was a couple weeks ago, based on what she was saying, and holy crap, you're here! Uh. You pause as you stare at the ghost in front of you. Hang on! You point at her. What are you doing here? What do you mean? I'm in a memory right now, aren't I? I just did the spiritual. What you call it? Spiritual communion. Yeah, that. How are you here? You demand immediately afterward. I'm dead. The laws of normal communion don't apply to me. I'm more attuned with other people's spirits as, well, a spirit. So when I saw you starting to commune with Esther, I pitched a ride. It's that easy? For me, it is. But enough about that. Look over there. The spirit motions to some commotion near the sanctuary. Sure enough, Esther is approaching the steps into the sanctuary with a group of priestesses in her wake. You notice one with light green hair walking straight, with her hands behind her back. There's another with gold and blonde hair who mumbles under her breath. Lastly, there's one with light brown hair and a vacant expression. Esther is talking quite loudly as she walks. 
And so my family decided to go to the castle to ask for me to get my own room. But can you believe that they refused? They said that there were no single bedrooms left in the cathedral and that I just have to manage in a dorm. Isn't that ridiculous? The others seem familiar with this routine. That's nice, Esther. The one with light brown hair answers dismissively. No, it's not nice, Alora. It's entirely beneath me to have to have a roommate. <laughs> Whatever. I'm sure if I just talk with High Priestess Raina about this, she'll clear everything up. That's the only reason I'm here today, after all. I thought we were coming here to clean up after the performance, the one with light green hair says. The High Priestess was going to be there to monitor us, yes? But I don't think she was expecting to argue over room arrangements. Yeah, yeah, whatever you say. Esther waves her off dismissively. We can clean too, or whatever. They're not mutually exclusive, Xantara. The priestesses vanish into the sanctuary, and Esther's voice gets quieter. Kat crosses her arms. Wow. You really know how to pick them, huh? How was I supposed to know that you would be like this? We're here to find London, alright? Who cares if they're a little bit prissy? You sure we can't find a different girl to commune with? Miss Spirit gives you an unamused expression. I already can't stand this one. Look, we are already here, so we may as well just see what happens next. All right, all right. I'm just giving you a hard time. Not, med not, not much else to do, but see the memory through. Or, you look around the church with a smirk. We freely look around the cathedral while we're in this memory to find where London's staying. Yeah, no. That's not how spiritual communion works. You're limited to the confines of that person's recollection of events. You can't go too far away from the subject of the memory because there's no way they would be aware of what was happening beyond that. Man! I thought it was really smart. You're learning. Kat tries to pat your head condescendingly, but her hand just phases through you. Well, uh, oh, gosh darn it. In that case, we should catch up to Esther in the sanctuary, right? Otherwise we won't be able to see what else she remembers. You pause as you look toward the sanctuary. Plus, this memory has to do with London. I wonder what London did to make Esther dislike her. Alright. I think they went that way? Yeah. Hopefully we didn't miss too much. Oh, that is a lot of... priestesses. We're in a chapel. In London. Hmm. You step into the sanctuary and there was Esther and the priestesses standing in the center of the chamber in surprise. Instead of High Priestess Reyna in the sanctuary, they find London. Her back is to them and her hands are clasped in quiet prayer before the Statue of Unity. What? Esther blinks at her. Yep! High Priestess in training! Is it time for our hourly prayer with the sanctuary already? The blonde priestess asks. Oh, what passage are you on? I can catch up. But I thought that High Priestess Reyna was supposed to be here. Not you, London. Esther interrupts the blonde priestess. Reyna's busy preparing her statement for the paper today. London cuts her off. She asked me to oversee your duties and assist you in cleaning the sanctuary for the time being. <laughs> With all due respect, London... Esther rolls her eyes. I need to talk to the High Priestess, not you. London's eyes narrow. As I said, she's busy. You'll have to wait. It's important, she tries to complain. I'm sure you can manage, right? Esther's jaw tightens. You're not the High Priestess yet. You shouldn't be able to boss people around like this. I... Hardly consider my recommendation for you to have patience as bossing you around, London replies. She tilts her head and smiles sweetly at Esther, although you notice her eyes narrow. Now, if that is all, why don't I gather up the cleaning supplies so we can finish this duty quickly? What a wise decision, Alora mumbles with a small smile on her face. Shut up, Alora, Esther fumes. You watch the group of priestesses accept their respective tools, and they get to work. Two or three would pick up some brooms to clear the floors, while the others would grab some rags and begin to polish the metal trinkets and candelabras. 
Esther picks up one of the candles and flicks a piece of dripping wax off the main body. Hmm, she hums to herself. You know, London, I heard something interesting from the other girls recently. I heard that you allowed a couple of outside civilians into the cathedral, despite the high priestess's orders for Lunar Isle to remain closed while she ruminates. London stops her work and casts an indifferent gaze back at Esther. What about it? That's not very responsible of you, is it? She jabs at London. Wasn't that against the rules? The high priestess was very clear that no one was allowed to enter the cathedral until she permitted it. Esther's right. These were the rules from the high priestess, and they should have been treated with respect and followed diligently, Dentara adds from the side. London smiles slightly. <laughs> what you don't understand, Esther, is that those rules don't apply to me. What's that supposed to mean? I didn't get in trouble with Reyna. Therefore, I'm above the rules. See? <laughs> I wasn't born yesterday. Maybe your words can intimidate other people. But not me. Esther scoffs. <laughs> oh, what the heck? You're so... 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 What? London asks with a raised eyebrow. A chill goes down your spine for a moment. You've known London to have a more devious side, but it still surprises you. It's a stark change from her usual kind-hearted persona. The other three priestesses quickly look up toward Esther to observe her next move. Alora speaks up. Perhaps it'd be better if we worked in silence. You never know what statues might have ears. The goddess could always be listening, Esther. Saying something unseemly now wouldn't be a good look. Esther similarly shivers at London's gaze and quickly backpedals. <laughs> Never mind. All right, then, London says to her. The rest of their time in the sanctuary is met with silence. However, you can tell by the color of Esther's face that she's internally fuming. It's just one of disagreement. Is there really enough reason to hate her? All London did was get snippy with her. That's not it, the priestess snaps at you. It wasn't just a disagreement. It was a blatant abuse of power. Where did she get off on talking to me like that, huh? You feel your mind begin to stir back to the present. Esther starts to pace back and forth. Her anger is far more visible in the present than it was in the past. You watch her cheeks turn red as she holds your breath to keep herself from saying anything obscene. Do you get it now? She demands. London Remington is just using her title as the high priestess in training to tell us what the rest of us should do. It's infuriating! What made her so special that she got that role in the first place? You frown at the girl and start to mumble under your breath. Maybe we shouldn't brag about our life all the time. What was that? N nothing! Nice. Very subtle. <laughs> uh, 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 is, is there anything else? That's only the beginning of what makes London so unbearable. The girl rolls her eyes. I bet if you ask any other priestess, she'd have some kind of story to tell about how awful and undeserving London is. She tosses her hair over her shoulder. Did you know that she even gets her own chamber in the cathedral? I still have to deal with a roommate. How unfair is that? So she has her own chamber? Uh, do you know where? Ugh. She shakes her head and massages her temples. Somewhere upstairs in a tower. Look, I don't even want to talk about London anymore. Just thinking about her is giving me a headache. She pauses for a moment and her eyes light up. Hang on. 
isn't one of the princes of Erwin leading the case? Do you know which one and where he is? <laughs> I wouldn't mind saying hi and sharing my own testimonies with him personally. You know what? I think he'd love to hear what you have to say. He's gotta be around here somewhere. You smile impishly at her. He might be talking to some other priestesses right now, but I think your story's much more important. Don't be afraid to just take up as much of his time as possible. <laughs> Finally, it looks like you're starting to understand. Esther smirks. Better late than never, I suppose. Now, if you'll excuse me. She walks past you, and you watch her look up and down the hall in search of the prince in charge. You snort as you try to hold back your laughter at your scheme. <laughs> That's what you get for kicking me out, Vincent. Oh, am I sensing a rivalry? Cat asks as she floats in front of you. Ah, it's just payback. You wave her off. However, you shake your head to refocus yourself on your investigation. That conversation would give us a lot to work with. We'll have to find someone else to talk to. Probably this next person has a better idea of how to talk to London and isn't so difficult in general. <laughs> I don't know if I'd say that talk was useless. What do you mean? That priestess said she was somewhere upstairs and that she had her own room. Cat motions to all the different priestesses around the room. Look at how many of them there are. They have to stay somewhere. If you find out where those rooms are located... Then I'll find London! You're pretty smart, Cat. I try. <laughs> oh, let's hurry up and get upstairs. As much as I'd love to see Vincent go with Esther, I can't afford to stick around and get caught. There are stairs over this way. Follow me. Cat gestures as she begins to hover away. Oh! oh. Yeah, not Ryan, all of not us are incorporeal! Rex. 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 You're going the wrong way. It's my theme song. It helps me. Theme song? It helps me sneak better. All right, we're good. Let's go. We're, I we're... think that hardly helps you sneak better. It helps. Anyway. This Up way. there? Yep. Okay. I've never been up these stairs. Neither have I. Huh. This cathedral is freaking huge! Whoa. Sure is. Okay. Whoa. Check out that killer view! Dang. You walk onto the balcony and look down at the hall below you. From above, you manage to spot Vincent and some of the other members of the vanguard scattered about. You sigh in relief. <sighs> Looks like our distraction worked. How long do you think it'll last? Considering how much she was talking to us, I'd say we have at least 15 minutes. You turn your head left and right in search of a priestess. But we still need directions. I think if we can make it to London's room without a hitch, we're good. Cat floats up towards the ceiling to overlook the balconies and the walkways around the room of the hall. I can see a couple, but it's up to you to choose which one you want to talk to. Maybe try to not find a really annoying one this time? I wasn't trying to in the first place! How was I supposed to know that- Whoa! You start your rebuttal at Kat, to Cat's statement. However, you're almost immediately knocked off balance by a force from behind. You stumble in your clunky metal uniform and wave your arms around to retain your balance. Oh my goodness! I'm so sorry, Miss Ritchie and Vanguard, sir! A girl's, young girl's voice says, I was in such a hurry, and I wasn't looking where I was going. Uh, t t t <clears throat> it's fine. Don't mention it. You turn around to face the young woman. She's about a foot shorter than you, with big and innocent eyes that gaze up into yours. She has brown hair that flows past her shoulders. You're surprised by your priestess outfit. It seems far less practical than the others. Her attire strikes you as someone trying to be cute rather than delicate. In fact, this individual seems daintier than some of the other priestesses you've met. Are you a priestess? Hmm? Yes, I am. She nods at you with a smile. 
You know, people ask me that a lot. I guess I don't look the part, huh? Well, my name is Claudia. I joined the Cathedral of Unity recently after moving to Erwin. She points at you with a giggle. <laughs> I could ask the same thing as a member of the Vanguard. I don't usually see you guards without your helmets. Y yeah, helmets don't really work with me. Oh, that's true. She looks at your horns. Unless you had some special type of helmet. Do they make helmets for dreads? If not, they should. <laughs> that wouldn't be expensive at all. You try to refocus on the conversation. I'm uh, ac actually part of the investigation right now. I assumed as much. <laughs> Why else would you be here? So, uh, as, as part of the investigation, I'm looking for London Remington. Do you know where she is? Instantly, you notice the girl frown at your statement. Oh, right. That makes sense, I guess. <clears throat> uh, 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 is this their problem? You fumble with your words as you stare at a change in countenance. No, 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 no! She shakes her head and brings her hands up. There's no big problem. I just recommend that you not talk to her. Why is that? There's a lot of things that the other priestesses have told me about her. The priestess explains. I don't know if she's really trustworthy. She might be trying to trick you guards just to get her way. Quite the impression she's made, huh? I don't understand. You apply to Claudia and Kat simultaneously. What, what, what kind of things have the other priestesses said? I don't know if I can tell you. Well, I, I need to know for this case. Oh. That's... Okay. A good point. <laughs> All right, then. I'll tell you. It started around the time I first came to the cathedral. Claudia begins. Kat gives you a small nod as you listen to Claudia narrate. You narrow your eyes as you follow her words carefully, dismissing the rest of the world along the way. Me and a couple of priestesses were going out to help people around Astra Centrum. It was my first time going on these trips, so a couple of my senior priestesses were going to show me the ropes. You and Kat glance around the memory for a moment. Where are we now? Definitely outside. Oh, wait. This is the bridge to Lunar Isle. What are we doing here? Come along, Claudia. A woman's voice calls from behind you. You, look back, you and Kat look back in confusion. You notice a group of three priestesses striding forward toward the gate out of Lunar Isle. One of them is Claudia, naturally. And you recognize the second one as the pink-haired priestess you met before the jousting tournament. The third is a dread with dark hair and a quiet demeanor. You step out of the way as the group of three passes you. However, you notice the cat makes no do effort to move and allows the three women to phase directly through her body. You give her a strange look, and she shrugs. Where are we going, Priestess Angela? Claudia asks the pink-haired woman. No need to be so formal. The woman Angela tells her. We don't bite. We don't have to worry about those fancy titles. Oh. Claudia frowns at her statement. Then how should I refer to you both? It feels rude to speak with you so casually when you both have so much more experience. You can just call us by our names, Angela tells her. Seniority doesn't matter here. We're sisters. She pauses and chuckles a bit. <laughs> Have you been talking to Esther too much? Don't listen to her or her snobby attitude. Actually, I haven't met Esther yet, Claudia admits. I haven't met a lot of the other priestesses. There are so many of them that it's become difficult to make an impactful introduction. Claudia hesitates, though. I did manage to talk to one priestess. Uh, she had white hair and wolf ears, but... I forget her name. Stay away from her. 
Uh-huh. Claudia blinks at her companion in confusion. Wait, what? what? What's wrong with her? Angela sighs. <sighs> Sorry for raising my voice. I'm just usually more composed than that. Hearing about that priestess just really grinds my gears. She inhales and exhales slowly. <sighs> That's London Remington. She's the apprentice to High Priestess Reyna, also called the High Priestess in Training. What's so bad about her? You can't trust her. She's a backstabber and a thief. She's bad news. Why do you say that? She seemed nice enough, I think. Claudia brings a finger to her chin. You've only been here a couple of days, so we don't expect you to really know her like we do. She's no faithful veteran to the worship of unity herself. In fact, we don't know who she really is or where she comes from. But we do know that she somehow managed to hex the high priestess. Hex? Claudia exclaims. That sounds scary. There's just no other explanation for it, Angela says. She must have manipulated Reyna somehow. That's the only logical evidence as to why the High Priestess would deem someone so unqualified her successor. Not to mention entirely ruin the dread. Presumably Sarah places a hand on Angela's shoulder. That's enough, she asserts authoritatively. It's irrelevant. Let it go for now. Angela sighs. <sighs> right. You're right. That's not the point of this trip. I'm sorry, Claudia. It's all right. But I would like to hear more when we have the chance, Claudia says. I don't like the sound of this priestess at all anymore. Good, Angela nods. Then I think you'll get along with the rest of us just fine. The three walk over the bridge and leave you and Kat to watch them go. You started to dislike London because of a rumor? You ask. It wasn't just a rumor. It made perfect sense. She became the high priestess in training in such a short amount of time that there has to be foul play. That's why I'll never mess with London Remington. Ever. But she's not the bad guy here. I'm not saying she's the bad guy, necessarily. The priestess cringes at the statement. She reads your expression and clears her throat. <clears throat> I'm just trying to warn you like my senior priestess has warned me. Have you even really gotten to know her? I haven't given her the chance to try and trick me! She places her hand on her chest. My older brother always called me gullible, so I've been very careful to stay safe. What's the worst that could happen if you just... Talk to her. She might lie to me and make me think that... I don't know. I'm really not the best person to ask about these things. If you're so interested in London, then I recommend, recommend talking to Angela. She's been keeping a close eye on London for a long time now. So she's quite the knowledgeable party. I'll... Keep that in mind. You frown. For now, I really need to see her. All right, then. Claudia hangs her head. But just let the record show that I tried. She points toward the eastern entrance of the cathedral. As the high priest is in training, London gets her own private chamber. And the chambers are over there? That's right. They're closest to the chapel's main entrance on either side of the grand organ. Claudia explains. London's room is going to be on the left side. Thank you. You bow your head respectfully. Just try to consider what I said, okay, Mr. Regian Guard? She furrows her brow. The other priestesses have a ton of horror stories about her, and I don't think it's a coincidence that she became Reyna's apprentice so quickly. She could just be extra devoted or something. I don't know if that's the case. Plenty of us are devoted, and some of the other girls have been around for a long time. 
but they were never given the same special treatment. She clears her throat. <clears throat> now, I should get going. Enjoy the rest of your day, sir, and good luck talking to the high priestess in training. She gives you a low bow before rushing around you and into the tower directly behind you. That was eventful. Cat says. You snap out of your persona and groan. Oh, what the heck? You smooth your hair out of your eyes. This is the third time. What's everyone's problem with London? Clearly it's big enough to put her in danger. I don't understand it. A London I know doesn't act the way they're describing, you tell Kat. She's not manipulative or abusive of her power. She's sweet and kind and smart, and, and she genuinely does what she can to help people. Are you sure you met the real London? She wouldn't lie to me. A moment of hesitation passes through your mind as you consider London's secrecy. You gulp as you recall her unwillingness to tell you where she came from before Erwin and your mind wanders through every moment that she's been particularly devious. However, you shake your head as you imagine the spot in Waterside she took you to. She's not like that. I don't know what's going on here, but those priestesses are wrong about her. If you say so. It doesn't really matter to me. She's not my friend, after all. Let's just find her quickly and clear this all up. All right, set towards the end of the cathedral. So this way? Probably. Okay. <sighs> Whoa. What? How does it feel to just defy walls? Honestly, kind of useful. <laughs> That's <laughs> crazy. I really wish I had that power. That's got to be so useful. <laughs> You can get into plenty of places you're not supposed to be, but I guess you did that just fine, and you're corporeal. Yeah, but I gotta jump through so many hoops to do it. You well. just gotta walk through a wall. <laughs> oh, okay. Is this it? Ooh, that is a big so piano. Good. Those are some big keys. Play with it. No, I can't. I can't. They'll give me away immediately. <laughs> you're oh, right, you're right. That is huge. How loud would it be to Probably make a sound very. across this entire cathedral? Jeez. Yeah, maybe it was a good idea not to play it. That's an organ, not a piano. Oh, organ. I'm going to play you one day. <clears throat> oh, where'd they go? Don't see anything here. Huh. Are you a connoisseur of fine arts, Cat? Not particularly. Yeah, me neither. I don't know what that is. That's just weird. <laughs> Anywho. <laughs> oh, hey, there's stairs. Well, that's convenient. Going up oh, the tower. I don't have vertigo, but I feel like I'm going to start having it soon. Oh, I'm glad this? I don't. <gasps> They, they wouldn't notice. Uh, they wouldn't notice. You they they wouldn't notice. What kind of cookie is that? Chaos cookie? <gasps> Sugar uh, cookies! Hold on. I got, I got a new favorite. All right, there we go. <clears throat> anyway. Have I had the gauntlet on this whole that. time? We will take that off now. <laughs> Whoops. <laughs> Aren't those really rare? I didn't even notice. But you did have a gauntlet, didn't you? Yeah. I found it, and almost died in the process, but I found it. Wow. I'd love to hear that story sometime. You sneak up the stairs toward the private chamber that London's staying in. However, as soon as you start to climb the first step, you hear metal blue boots clanging above you. What the heck? You frown at the noise. What's that? I don't know. Sit tight. I'll go check it out. Cat quickly floats up the steps to investigate ahead of you. You step down from the stairs and hug the wall. You try your best to stay out of direct sight lines from the windows. Cat returns shortly after. She nods her head up the stairs. There's a guard up there patrolling in front of the door. Seems like your plan to just walk in won't be that easy. 
man. You pout. What do we do about him? I, I don't know. You're the corporeal one here. I'm just tagging along. You bring your hand to your chin as you try to strategize around this new development. Hmm. You lock eyes with Kat for an extended period of time. Kat blinks at you before she begins to realize exactly what you're thinking. What? Oh, come on. The guard can't see you, and you already prove that you can knock stuff over. You just have to cause a big enough distraction for me to sneak in. I'm not gonna haunt some random guard. I have higher standards than that. It'll only be for a couple of minutes. What do I get out of it? I don't know. What do you want? She considers your question for a moment before puffing out her cheeks stubbornly. For you to promise that you'll come back for me and take me with you. Eh? Don't make me repeat myself. Look, Lyle is a really nice guy and I like working with him, but he doesn't go on cool adventures like this. I've been super bored for a while now and this whole sneaking into the cathedral thing has been cool. So just... Let me follow you around for the rest of your investigation, and I'll distract that guard. You stare at her in surprise, before nodding. I don't see why not, you say. You've been cool, too. The ghost stares at you, before grinning at your statement. <laughs> in an instant, she vanishes from sight, and you feel a cool breeze rush past you up the stairs. A couple of loud bangs and crashes emanate from the top of the staircase, you hear a frightened shout before a member of the vanguard stumbles down the steps before you. You back up to give him plenty of space and quickly bring your hands up to your face to cover most of your features. The skin is quite pale and he seems panicked. The, 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 the candle hammer moved on its own and then the fire blew itself out and, and a painting started to shake. There's some witchcraft going on. Witchcraft! He shouts in a frenzy. I can't see up there. Uh, um, ahem. <clears throat> Have no fear, fellow guard. I will take your post. I'll have to report this to the lead investigator. This isn't normal at all. You feel the breeze rush by you again, and a couple more lanterns blow themselves out. The man shrieks. Ah! Never mind! We need the high priestess! This place needs to be exercised! As the guard runs out of the area, more chaos begins to follow him. Cat appears before you for a split second to give you a mischievous giggle. You find yourself laughing as well as she flies off after the guard to maintain her distraction. <sighs> I'm coming, London. <sighs> no, knock, knock, wait. The door's stuck. <sighs> You knock on the door excitedly before walking into the room. The young woman stands at the furthest end of the room as she gazes out the window, deep in contemplation. London! She sighs as you call her name. Listen, I already told the prince and the other guards everything I know. If I could just have a moment to collect my thoughts. No, 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 no! It's me, Rex! You wave your hand as she turns around in shock. You watch her expression light up with recognition, as her lips widen into a smile. Rex, she says happily. I didn't expect you to be here. Why are you dressed as a member of the Vanguard? They wouldn't let me into the cathedral otherwise, and I wanted to see you. You explain. Things are crazy down there. I can only imagine. She crosses her arms. Unfortunately, the guards have been keeping a close eye on me. They won't let me leave my chamber. Uh, have they told you what's going on? I've tried to ask for an explanation, but no one's willing to give me a straight answer. However, I've come to my own conclusions while stuck up here. She calmly looks out the window. Someone is trying to... end me, aren't they? Yes. And I think one of the priestesses wants it to happen. I see, she answers calmly. Her eyes drift to the floor as she brings her hand to her chin. Hmm. You blink at her, surprised by her reaction. Uh, I'm gonna be honest, I was expecting a little more of a 
freak out, I'm thinking, she says curtly before you can finish your sentence. You quickly shut your mouth and look away to rub the back of your neck. Right. Sorry. She doesn't reply, although she flashes you a small smile before returning to the window. A priestess, she considers. That is... complicated, isn't it? Do you have any idea who it might be? I'm afraid not, she sighs. <sighs> and it's not easy for me to narrow down the list while I'm stuck in here either. Suddenly, she gets a small glint in her eye as she looks back over at you. Although, with a uniform like that, you're not nearly as restricted, are you, Rex? Not really. Perhaps you could help me out with my own little investigation. Is that safe? I'm not asking you to do anything bad, she waves dismissively. I just need you to confirm some information for me. Okay, uh, what kind of information? There is a particular priestess who is rather popular with the others, or at least popular in comparison to me. I believe she would greatly benefit from my disappearance. You think she might be the one behind the threat on your life? I'm not sure, but I have my suspicions. All I need you to do is see what she's up to today. I'm curious how she's dealing with the investigation. Maybe take a look at her friends, too. Why this priestess specifically? Who is she? Her name is Melody. London explains. She was the high priestess in training before I came along. I'm not sure why Reyna chose me over her, but I took her position in the chapel as Reyna's apprentice. Oh, shoot. That's why I think she'd benefit the most from my... removal. London rubs her arm. After all, with her competition gone, she'd get her position back. Do you really think she'd get rid of you just for that? Obviously someone would, London heaves a sigh. So I can't be certain of anything. I guess not. The dorm toys for the other priestesses are on the opposite side of the cathedral, she explains to you. Melody rooms above the northern entrance on the left side. You should be able to find her there. What am I looking for? you ask. I doubt she's just going to confess, and the cathedral's calling with guards, and Vincent's still downward somewhere. You're just going to have to listen for my name and whatever she might say about me. I have some theories as to how she might be reacting to the news. And if you can find her friends, I'd want to hear what they have to say too. Especially if they're talking together. She gazes into your eyes. Can you... Do that for me, Rex? There's a hint of desperation in her voice. She really can't do much in this room, but you can tell from the look in her eyes that she wants to help all the same. Yeah, yeah, I, I can do that. Thank you, she exhales in relief. Be careful and don't get caught. I'll be waiting for you, here for you. It's not as though I can do much else. Chin up. We'll figure this out. Okay. All right. I just gotta get over there. Through this way. A lot of people. It's a lot of priestesses. Way more than I was expecting, but I guess I always knew there was at least a lot. <sighs> okay, this on the left side. So over here. I'm gonna guess it's this one. Whoa. 
We're going even higher up. Oh boy, okay, cool. Hmm? Door here. What is this? Hmm? Oh. You press your ear against the door. Is this the room that London was talking about? You struggle to hear anything through the door, however. Your eyes narrow as you press your ear against the door for even a hint of noise. Uh, suddenly, from within the room, a loud snort is heard. You pull away confusion and blink at the door. You try to peek into the room through the window on the door. What? What? What the, what the heck? There's no one in the room besides a single priestess, who lays across her bed. You can't make out much about her except that she has boy short blonde hair and eyebrow piercings. She opens her mouth and starts to loudly snore in her slumber. You step back and just stare at the door in confusion. That wasn't a sight you were expecting to see from such a dignified priestess, but hey, who are you to judge? You shrug off the occurrence and continue forward. It obviously wasn't the right room. There's another one here. Okay. Not this one. You pause in front of the door and kneel next to it. Before you've even managed to press your ear against it, you hear voices from inside. They seem loud and energetic. Not fair here. The whole thing probably wouldn't even be happening if she didn't take that role to begin with. One familiar voice shouts. Calm down. Another one speaks up. And keep your voice down. It's not like anyone's going to hear us. All those guards are in the main hall with the other priestesses. Besides, you know that I'm right. You can't deny it. Whether you're right or wrong doesn't matter, the calmer voice says. This is the reality we live in. So we just have to accept it. How can you be so calm? She's the entire reason that you're in here to begin with. There could have been other circumstances. I'm not trying to defend her. I'm just trying to consider the alternatives. You take a couple of deep breaths before garnering the courage to peek into the room through the window. You notice one priestess pacing back and forth inside the room. She's the same one that encountered you the other day when you were trying to find London for the jousting tournament. Angela. Then... There are two others who sit on a bed watching her pace. The first you recognize from one of the memories you visited. She has a vacant expression on her face, and she sways back and forth with a small smile on her face. But you've never seen the third. Her hair is a darker shade of pink, and her eyes are a dull gray. I think you're just worrying too much, the one with the thoughtless expression giggles. <laughs> It'll be fine. The entire thing will blow over in no time. It's not about the investigation, Elora, Angela says to her. She crosses her arms. It's about London. It's always about London. Not always, Elora points out. Just most of the time. But what I'm really wondering is how you can stand to be so calm about it. Elora looks over at the girl next to her. After all... You're the one who's lost the most after her arrival, Melody. Your eyes widen slightly. So the other girl is Melody. Melody sighs. <sighs> I'm not happy with her, no. But if the High Priestess believes she was more worthy of the role, then... I can't argue with her. That's such nonsense, Angela says. You should be mad. Enraged, even. You're the one who seems more upset about it than I am, Melody points out. Of course I'm upset. You deserve to be the High Priestess more than London Remington does. She has no background, no history, no nothing. She just waltzed in and decided to take over like some kind of tyrant, Angela says. She didn't waltz, silly. She walked in, Elora says. You know what I mean, Angela scoffs. <laughs> it wouldn't kill you to let it all out sometimes. You don't have to be prim and proper constantly. 
You're entitled to feeling upset. Melody stares at Angela. You're right. And when I feel that is appropriate, you'll be the first one I go to, Angela. But I don't have anything more to say on the matter. Everyone else seems to be up in arms, Alora contemplates. I've never heard people so actively negative towards one person. The investigation certainly brought up some mixed feelings, Melody considers. It's all that people are talking about. The statement catches you off guard. Has this hostility aggravated because of the circumstances? It's only fair, Angela shrugs her shoulders. London Remington's getting a taste of her own medicine. Hopefully she'll learn the consequences of manipulating her way into power. That's a rather morbid statement, Nalora says. It's a factual statement, Angela huffs. All of the other priestesses agree. I've already had to have this conversation a couple of times. No one likes her. Let's shelve this topic. I'm tired. And there's no use hearing what we already know again, Melody dictates. You pull away from the door and stumble back, your teeth clenched. Is this really what the priestesses think about London? All of them? Dang. That's... Oh my gosh. This really is just our life. That's... Huh. It's horrible. I'm back. London. You walk back into London's room and close the door behind you. She stands up expectedly to heal your report. Well, did you find her? I did. What did you hear? You hesitate to answer a question as you bite your lip nervously. London, I, I've, got, I've got some bad news. More than the worse than the news that someone's trying to get rid of me. She raises an eyebrow. No, no, not that bad. Just you sigh. I thought it was maybe just one or two people who didn't like you. You explain, but it turns out that none of the priestesses are actually on your side. They all hate you. She blinks at you, and nods slowly. I see. I I'm sorry, I, I didn't want you to find out like this. Don't get me wrong, she interrupts you. I already knew that they hated me, but I do find it interesting that they're being more honest about their opinions now. If you're able to discern this that easily, then they must really be preaching it to anyone that can hear. She starts to pace. I wonder if their timing has something to do with the curtain case. It's possible. You join her in contemplation. I also heard them talking about how this case has uprooted a lot of negative feelings towards you. They all seem like they're feeding on their mutual content. Convenient, don't you think? London says. Someone makes a threat against my life. And at the exact same time... My fellow priestesses just so happen to brazenly express their dislike of me. She shakes her head. It feels like someone's spurring them on. They're trying to rile up the others. And that makes it harder to figure out which one of them is trying to take me out. London completes her thought. We can't find out who has it in for me if they all have it in for me. That's... 
really smart, you say to her, but also really irritating. What are we supposed to do now? We'll have to find a new avenue to continue to, to investigate besides just interrogation. Obviously, questioning the priestesses won't get us anywhere, she says. And with the position we're both in, questioning's hardly an option. Hmm. In that case, maybe we could... Before you can finish your sentence, the door to London's room swings open. A certain prince storms inside with an enraged expression on his face. Of course, it's you, he says. The Vincent! You put on a smile and try to play it cool. Uh, 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 hey, dude! How are you doing? Don't! He snaps at you. I thought you would sneak your way back in. But I never thought you'd go to the effort of getting it disguised. Did you steal that armor from the Aegean Vanguard? You look down at your outfit and then back up at Vincent. No. Unbelievable. He tosses his arms up in the air. For the love of unity, get out of that uniform and get out of the cathedral. Hang on a second, you say as you start to remove the armor quickly. London watches you with raised eyebrows as you continue. We just figured something out. So maybe you could just think for a second before you kick me out again. I already heard your little info dump. He massaged the bridge of his nose. Oh. But exactly. All the priestesses don't like London. I figured that much out myself, he says. I didn't need you to jump in and interfere with my case. I don't need you to do my job for me. He charges forward and begins to grab at the pieces of armor on your body. Now get this ridiculous disguise off, return it to the guard it belongs to, and get out! Wait a minute, Prince Vincent. London speaks up. Huh? London walks over and separates you and Vincent. Firstly, I don't need the two of you fighting in my room, she says firmly. I'm being forced to stay here, so I'd like it if you didn't make a mess. Forced? <laughs> Miss Remington. Secondly, I don't want to hear any more talk of Rex getting removed from the cathedral, she says. If you kick him out, then I don't believe I'll have anything more to say to you or your guards during the investigation. W what? Come on, Miss Remington, let's be reasonable here. I think I'm being quite reasonable. I'm the one in danger. Yet I feel more like a prisoner than a victim. If you're going to continue investigating this case... Then I have a few terms. Huh? Terms? I have questions that I want answers to, and I don't appreciate being confined to my room. I want to come to my own conclusions, London says. You may be in danger if you leave, Vincent grits his teeth. I can't risk your life just because you want to be a detective! You have a legion of Aegean guards at your disposal, and yourself. Are you saying you're incapable of keeping me safe? She asks. No, I, I'm not saying that at all. Then for my next demand, I want Rex to help me with my investigation, she says. He can come and go into the chapel as he pleases and assist me however I wish him to. Vincent seems flabbergasted. D him! Why him? London glances away. I... Need him. It has to be him. No one else can help me like he can. Vincent turns red in the face. <laughs> this is entirely unorthodox. I'm the one in charge here, Miss Remington, not you! She turns back to Vincent. But I'm the one being threatened. And I'm the one you're working so hard to protect. I can make your job harder if that's your wish. Or you can agree to my terms and we'll all stay on the same page. Vincent opens his mouth to speak, but he seems at a loss for words. After several tense moments, he groans in frustration. Ugh. You haven't given me any other choice in the matter, he concedes. But if that's what you want, Miss Remington, then I have some terms of my own. Then why don't we discuss it together like adults, she smiles. As long as you respect my wishes, I suppose I can learn to respect yours. Fine. Vincent says, but I want him out of here. He points at you. Man, I didn't do anything. You stole a uniform and broke into the cathedral, he counters. You've done enough for today. London sighs. 
Fine, then. Rex, you can go, okay? I'll be all right. Are, are you sure? I'm right. I'm right here. She'll be fine, Vincent scoffs. Go home for now. We'll talk more later, once the prince and I have reached an agreement. She gives you a wink. All right. Bye, London. Please be careful. <sighs> I guess all I can do is head home. The wrong way. Fine. At least I guess we did figure out some stuff today. I'll just keep helping in any way I can and work harder. And then she'll be okay. And now Vincent can't stop me, which is a silver lining. Whew. Let's see, head outside and head home now. I feel like I'm any closer to figure out who it is. I cannot imagine how London must be feeling. I mean, even if they hate her and she says she knows they hated her, imagine spending so much time with people and then just finding out one of them is trying to get you hurt. It's horrible. Sun's going down. Yeah, she can get back soon before it gets dark, I guess. You walk out of the cathedral, utterly exhausted. You hang your head as you heave a long and dramatic sigh. Hey! A female's voice calls to you. You turn around to see the spirit, Cat, floating back over to you. Oh, Cat, there you are. So, how'd it go? Did you get all the answers you wanted? You think about it. Not really, but it worked out better than I thought. Clearly, since you ditched the armor. On one hand, I'm not banned from the cathedral anymore. But on the other hand, I think the investigation just got a whole lot harder. Why do you say that? I thought things were complicated before when we saw those memories, but I mean, those priestess obviously didn't like London, but... I didn't think it was every priestess. You shake your head. Turns out, no one really likes her. Seriously? Not a single person? That's what I said! It doesn't make any sense to me, but they don't! And now the suspect list is even longer than I thought. A priestess has to be working with someone to try to get rid of her, but how can I narrow down which priestess of all of them have a motive? And the ghost Yikes. crosses her arms. Sounds like you've got your work cut out for you. Yeah, you have no idea. At least that'll keep things interesting for me. She giggles to herself. <laughs> Since you said I could stick around, remember? Yeah, I remember. But you've got to keep helping me figure out this communion stuff that you and Lyle were talking about. Deal? I can do that. She nods. She offers a hand for a handshake. Deal. All right, then. Let's... You try to grab Kat's hand, only to find it intangible. Uh. Uh, oh. <laughs> right. Kat blinks at her extended hand. I forgot about that. Me too. Well, oh, okay, let's just pretend we shook on it. The ghost next starts to float off toward the cemetery. Take care of yourself. I'll see you around, Rex. I'd see you, Kat. All right. Long road home. I think I'll enjoy it today.
Rex? Jeez, could you come in any louder? Sorry, didn't mean to wake you up. Alright, what's your deal? My deal? You've got a sad look on your face. The Silver Wings didn't mess with you again, did they? No, 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 nothing like that. I just... I have a lot on my mind right now. <sighs> well, quit it. You're gonna give yourself wrinkles if you keep furrowing your brow like that. Just try to get some sleep and forget about it. You're right. Good night, Alice.